Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a quick one, and I know I always say they're going to be quick ones, but I really mean it today. Uh, where I put the SSD and second hard drive in my Dell E7440 here. I just want to do get this done today because right now I'm just kind of in the mood to sit in my chair and watch TV, and that's a good day to reload Windows 10. This thing can just hang out by my side doing that. And you guys have already seen all that stuff on my mom's E6410, and I'll throw links for those up in the top and down in the description and then there's the broken tech playlist and all that stuff you can catch up on all of it but i thought the hardware installation on this might be interesting because that's something i'm not going to cover otherwise and there will end up being a software installation portion of this thing eventually because it is going to end up being a little interesting but it should also be really short so anyway let's get into it so like always first thing we're going to do is eject the battery out of it any laptop where you can do that you should and we got to take those two screws out Pop it back, and lift her on out, and we're in. So I have never actually installed a MSATA drive before, so this will be fun for me. This is our one terabyte Samsung Evo. Should be a nice high quality drive for us. Can ever get it out of the box. And I'm not seeing any screws in there. I don't know if that's a screw boss or not. So it looks like I'm going to have to probably go raid my laptop screw collection to actually put it in. It looks like it just wants to do one of those numbers. I'll probably look more carefully at that before I do it. And just to throw it out there, this is like a computer repair kit I bought at a computer show like 20 or 25 years ago and it's just been awesome to have. Uh, I don't even know if computer shows are still a thing, but it is literally what it sounds like. You would go to a large gathering area in your town, be it a concert venue or whatever, and there would be vendors set up selling all kinds of things, uh, usually at deep discount prices. This was well back before the days of Amazon and all that kind of stuff, so it was pretty cool. I bought my first hard drive at that computer show, not necessarily when I bought this one, but at that show that came every year. It was a dollar a megabyte. It was a 540 meg drive for $540. And I still own that drive, and that drive still works. Amazing. Uh, yeah, there's something weird going on with that hole. Take a closer look at that and get back with you guys. It doesn't seem as though there should be any mystery, but what I'm gonna do is pop the existing hard drive out that was just in with these four screws. And I'm just gonna take it out of there because I wanna do that anyway, and see if maybe something becomes more clear in this process. See if maybe one of these screws fits it, or if I just need to find a smaller screw, or what? What is this guy? No, oh, this is an ancient SSD. <laughs> 240 gig. Eh, feels odd. It's got a very light weight to it. But, alright, so nothing is more clear now. There you guys can get a little better view of what's going on. These all have kind of that like gray color. This one actually, that gray stuff feels like it's maybe up, like it's rised like epoxy or something, but it it's not the same diameter screw as the hard drive screws, so I'm gonna have to dig up a little screw off of something to see if it'll go in. Maybe one of these Wi-Fi card screws. Okay, so I just took the screw out of the Wi-Fi adapter and it did start in over here. It feels really, it felt really weird going in. I think there's some crap in the threads in this for some reason, but it feels like that screw is good. This is a screw out of my parts collection that is also out of a Dell and it didn't seem to want to so maybe I'll try it again now that we got this guy in the hole once and see if it goes better for us. And if it doesn't I guess I'll continue to try and loot my stash. Yep it's good now. Awesome. And this screw <laughs> I'm positive came out, came out of a uh, ancient Bostro that my mom destroyed about uh, 10 years ago. So where were we? That's right, we were putting this guy in. I want to get these cables out of our way, at least for a short while. That doesn't really look like it wanted to seat very well. So we can gently pop it back up and try and maybe push it in a little. There it goes, that's much better. Yep, we're looking fine now. And they are apparently supposed to pop up like that. That's Apparently a design feature of that connector. There we go. That's much better. All right. 
SSD installed. And this is our Seagate Fire CUDA 2TB hybrid SSD slash traditional HDD drive. I have in the last several years not had good luck at all with uh, Seagate mobile drives or two and a half inch drives. So we'll see how this works out for us, but this should be pretty straightforward. Oh, that's interesting. This connector is, I've never seen a laptop with a wire harness connector like that. It's actually kind of hand, handy. Got her plugged in. Should be able to just put our bracket back on. If I can remember from five minutes ago when I took it off, it looks like that's the idea. Okay, that is our hardware installation. I'm going to toss the battery back in it quick and flip it over. And of course we want to be careful to not short anything out on the bottom of it. Um, that's one of the reasons why I always do my work on this uh, white towel. You know, it should be pretty non-conductive. Okay, battery's in. So we're gonna boot it up and we're gonna go in the BIOS and hopefully we see two drives. Moment of truth, let's see if we let the smoke out. No fire, bad sounds yet. Let's get our F12 key ready. I'm betting that's what we need. Preparing one-time boot, I think we're good. Yep, BIOS setup, system information. Yeah, it's doing what I was afraid it was gonna do. It's assigning the uh, hard drive, the two terabyte is the primary, and then the actual SSD is the secondary. So we need to see if we can change that. But otherwise, that looks fine. And the last thing I wanna do to this thing on the hardware side is take this heat sink off and repaste it. And again, you guys saw me repaste my mother's pretty in a pretty in-depth way. You can refer to that video if you want to see how I actually go about it. I'm just going to show you how to remove the heatsink on a 7440. It looks like we have four screws that hold it to, I assume, chipset, and then another two that hold it into the case. And those are all different so far, so I'm going to start keeping track of them because I don't know if it's important. So I took a long one out of that corner. Long one came out of there. Short one came out of there. Let's go here and see if we get another short one. That's a yes. Appears to be the same short one, so I'm gonna bet all those are that way. Serendipitous, I just showed you guys this little PC kit that I bought a thousand years ago, because we actually need to use some of the stuff. The screw didn't wanna come out. So the kit comes with these little, one of these little claw tools, you know see these for getting pickles out of a jar sometimes but I don't like using magnets around computers it's probably safe today with solid-state drives and stuff but I still don't like doing it so I don't anyway both of those are long I'm only hoping that we're actually supposed to take these screws out since those are actually springs I'm betting yes and we'll get the last one grab our grabby tool that's a small one too <laughs> well, our PC kit also came with a pair of pretty crappy but giant tipped tweezers, which are handy for this. There we go. And all the screws that came out of there are the same small length, and these two are longer. So let's get the wire harness disconnected, if we can. I actually want a small flat blade for that. Let's kind of work it back and forth. We don't want to break anything. Let's try two flat blades at once and see if we can push it off there. There it goes. Okay, so let's see if that guy wants to release. It's like sort of is the answer to that. Yep, there we go. wiggle it on out of the case. There it is. She's a little dusty in there. We'll, we'll take that out in the shop and hit it with some compressed air. And holy crap, look at the absolutely terrible thermal paste job somebody did on this. Uh, let's see if this stuff is from the land before time. I bet it is. Oh yeah, that is ultra rock hard. That's exactly what I expected to find in my mom's laptop and that's why we're doing this. So yeah, that stuff's super gross. It all needs cleaned off properly. And somebody did a really crap job of it. Look how, look how way too much they used. So you guys saw me, uh, saw how to clean this up properly in that other video. 
I just wanted to get you this far so you could, for one, see if it looked like that. And it does, which is kind of cool because the other one was actually nice. And then just to show you how to get the heat sink off of this. So I'm going to get this done. I'm going to flip it back over, turn it back on, see if I can change the sequence of those drives. And then I think that's going to be it. And that paste was so old and so crap that I cleaned all that off of there. So this, this looks like I've cleaned it with alcohol. I haven't. That was all which is a dry Q-tip. I was just breaking it off of there like it's loose mortar. So that's one of the reasons why it's really important to do this when you get a used computer. And also one of the reasons why it's important to use a quality product like the enslaver of humanity over here. The thermal paste on this heat sink is so bad that it's actually like caked on and built up and I can I can feel those little dots those little silver dots under my glove even I don't know how you even do that but I'm gonna do something I have never had to do with a computer part in my entire life I'm gonna take this thing out to the garage and hit it with a can of brake clean now keep in mind this is just a cooling fan this isn't a processor this isn't anything like that and I'm only gonna spray this part down here and I'm definitely not gonna install it before it's dry or anything else so I'm going to hit it with some brake clean and a rag and see if I can get that crap off because alcohol doesn't really want to lift it. It's, it does, but it's taken forever. So what I actually ended up doing with this thing is I just sprayed some uh, brake clean on a rag and started wiping it down and that got quite a lot of it. It worked really good actually, but there was still quite a lot left. So I actually went to some lighter fluid on a rag and I think the lighter fluid, that's the rag that has the lighter fluid on it, was actually removing the oxidation from the copper and I think it might have actually maybe not lifted but kind of illustrated the real problem here I think the copper plating on this thing is actually failing I think those are actually pits in this thing and if you look at it I don't know if the camera will show it yeah kinda does this the surface of this thing is all rough so I just did some digging and I looked around eBay to see if I could just order a brand new Dell part and just replace all this and the answer to that is no and the heat sinks I found that they showed pictures of the actual heat sink face itself uh, looked probably worse than this one so go figure I guess they all look that way and I thought well just to play it safe I'll just buy a new cooling fan and all of the new cooling fans that say they're new are straight from China so you can pretty much bet they are not actually new and they've pulled them out of recycled laptops. So we're going to run it like it is and not worry about it unless it gives us a problem because there's really nothing else reasonable to do. Uh, if I got a hold of Dell and they would sell me one of these as a replacement part uh, from them directly, my guess is it would cost more than the laptop. So not even going to worry about it. So I'm just going to take that out, blow it out, blow this out, thermal paste, the end for that. So I got it as cleaned up as I realistically can. I think that old thermal paste was such crap it actually stained everything because that doesn't lift off and you can kind of see the outline of where it was. I can also kind of understand why it was such a mess because this chip is so long. So I'll probably end up doing like two small dots and a small dot and put it all back together. Like that. We didn't need 10 quarts of it like they poured in here before. Okay, so it's all thermal pasted up and everything. The very first thing we're going to do, seeing the oh neat <laughs> yeah seeing that awful uh, thermal paste job was we were going to look at the system events for thermal events and yeah that's not good system board thermal trip uh two years ago and it's well almost three it's pretty likely that that isn't good it is what it is i own it now if i have to gut it and put a motherboard in it or just buy another replacement then it is what it is i can't do anything about it anymore so that sucks. We'll see how it goes for me. Uh, at least now it's pasted properly. Let's see if we can get the drives sorted out. So what I've done here is I've gone into the boot sequence menu and I've only given it the option of mini card SSD boot. Actually I want to enable USB boot as well. Those are still reversed. It's still seeing the primary as the actual hard drive. I'm betting since I've told it only to boot to the SSD that Windows will see that as the C drive and we'll be good. But we'll try and find out. I'll keep you posted. And actually the place to do that in Windows 10 is right here. This is the partition menu screen. And this is a still frame of the video from my mom's laptop. On my 7440 it just lists two drives here. And drive 1 happened to be the one instead of drive 0. 
that I wanted to install Windows on. So I just selected that, Windows figured it out and made that the C drive and the other one the D drive. So in the BIOS, they're still backward, but in reality in Windows, they are the way I want them. If you're running another OS like you know Linux or something like that, I have no clue how you need to assign your drive letters if you want them to work that way. But FYI, with Windows 10, that's the way to do it. I think that's going to be the end of the hardware section of our video here, unless I have to come back and revisit this topic. But as always, guys, I want to thank you for stopping in, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.